everyone, Leilani Cawthon, back with my audience and a new crowd here in Houston, Texas. Uh, Leilani, I'm the CEO of Learning Council News Media and Research. I'm really saying that because he just met me. <laughs> so um, this is Stephen McCandless, who's the superintendent of Cleveland ISD in Texas. Yes. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Nice to be I here. I barely let you eat any lunch, and I'm throwing you on camera. So, so let me know if you, you need are, something. You are good. I'm good. Okay, good. Thank I'm going to come back to having you give us a little description of the district, what's going okay. on over there, and then I'm going to throw real questions at you. But then next to you, you have Chad Green, who's the Director of Technology Operations at Klein ISD. Mm -hmm. You're going to also tell us, like, size of district, what's going on over there? Sure. Okay. Also, I have with me Roger Eggle, who's the Director of Technology from Bridgeport ISD, yes, Texas. Yes, okay, good. So I'm really glad to have the three of you here. You're all different districts. Because we really got a lot from Spring ISD, who's in a super, super duper enclave of superness and uh, doing really well. They're Spring not branch. They're not Spring really branch. Spring, Spring Branch. Spring Branch. Spring, Branch. Spring Break. That would spring be really break. nice, right? <laughs> let's just be all, let's just be at spring break school. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'd want to go there. Um, I'm sorry, spring branch. It's been a long day, right? We've talked, we've like, I'm practically talked out. So got, yeah, so they're super awesome. They only lost a few kids so far, whereas the whole rest of the nation is just like, you know, they lost 1,000 here, 1,000, 200,000 kids have left our district kind of thing going on all across the nation. So we got some awesomeness here in spring branch, which is our host. Thank you very much. Woohoo! Okay. Um, but let's start first with you guys and what's going on for you. And then I'm going to throw in the real questions, which will, won't be too hard. I'm sure they won't be too hard. Absolutely. Okay, so talk about you. Like, what's going on for you in your district? Uh, what isn't going on? Cleveland ISD has been labeled the fastest growing district in Texas uh, since 2019 by TEA. We're in a hyper growth situation. We are enrolling about 150 students a month on average. Wow. Uh, when I came in 2013 to be high school principal, the district enrollment was, enrollment was right around 3,200. And as of yesterday, we're at 11,800. And the demographers tell us we're heading to 50,000 students. What is uh, happening? Is everyone uh, moving there? What is going on? Everyone's moving to Texas. Yes, well, I knew that. <laughs> Except for me, I left California for Little Rock, Arkansas. That's oh, right. Okay. Sorry, yes, about, sorry yes. about that, Texas. Love all of you, really seriously. Go ahead. Um, a developer, he developed 33,000 acres in the southern portion of our district. And those of you who are familiar with the Grand Parkway, it crosses through New Caney uh, right there at 59. Well, you know where that is, and you're thinking, okay, Cleveland is about another 20, 30 minutes north. But Cleveland ISD actually extends south on the other side of the Grand Parkway. We're two miles south of the Grand Parkway. So anything that is happening on the Grand Parkway right now north is Cleveland ISD. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have about a four-mile stretch that covers the Grand Parkway. And that was all forced a few years ago. And you can imagine it's all home sites now. And they are moving in daily. This is so fun. <laughs> this is so not the story everywhere else. I'm loving this. Okay, go ahead. Uh, but great things are going on in Cleveland ISD. And with that hyper growth, you have to look at how do you keep up with facilities, but especially technology and internet availability and uh, the digital learning for the students and everything they need. Uh, so we work daily to make sure that is provided to our students, uh, constantly working with the infrastructure from the county, the city, and the state. Uh, to get internet out there, there were people who still had, uh, I call it the Usenet satellite internet, uh, but we're, we're finally getting the, the fiber internet and we have 5G. And, uh, but for all of that to happen in such a short time span for a community that for so long was the quiet little Cleveland, um, where you, you went to maybe take care of uh, your pasture if you had some livestock, and now it is just bustling with constant traffic and people going in and out and new stores popping up and uh, it, it's just nonstop out there. So the infrastructure uh, doesn't happen fast enough for such a, a fast growth area. Wow. So, so you kind of went from like longhorns and goats to <laughs> kids like that, yeah. ripped down the fences and put up houses. Like whole housing crops it probably looks like to you. Like another housing crop went in. 
It is. It, it is. And, um, you know, I'll share with you, I, I love Cleveland. I've been there 10 years, and I even grew up in Channel View, which is just east of Houston. So I'm very familiar with uh, the uh, area. But when I first started working there and was high school principal, uh, I would listen to the bus drivers on the radio. We had a radio, and we, we would listen to see how yeah. things are going. Yeah. And I would hear the bus driver saying, I don't know where that street is. And one would say, you turn at the big oak tree that has the big branch that hangs over because it was developing so quickly, the street signs were not in yet. And now there's actual streets and subdivisions and neighborhoods. But I like uh, being in this position because I was there to see it grow. I was there to see it go from longhorns and, and uh, sheep to now it's houses and and students everywhere. So it's very exciting for me. Yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know only a couple superintendents nationwide. One would be Steve Beebe from Buckeye Union outside of Phoenix. Similar, but not quite as fabulous. But they've been through there a little bit, a little bit, a couple years ago, right? And then probably West Ada and Boise. Okay. Like, boom, boom, boom. Right? Oh, yes. Going on. This is awesome. Okay, good. All right, little intro from you, Chad. Tell us all about it. So um, I'm Chad Green. I'm uh, from. Klein ISD. Klein ISD is 88 square miles um, just north of here. Um, we were a fast growth district for the last 10, 15 years. Uh, we now sit at about 55,000 students. When the pandemic hit, we were at 44 or 54,000 students. We lost about 1,000 to 2,000 after the pandemic, but now we've gained them back and then some. Um, so because this is Texas, this is Texas and everybody yes, loves and to be this here is the way it rolls. So, I love it. But um, yeah, we uh, 16th largest school district in the state of Texas and every day is a challenge. So well, of course, because children yep. are living lightning and yes, that's what goes on. Yep. Well, I love it. Okay. So your angle, Mr. Eagle, 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 Eagle. Did I say that? So eagle. E A like Eagle, like the bird. Exactly. Yes. Sir. I won't forget that now. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Bridgeport ISD, uh, Roger Eagle, Director of Technology. We're we're not a fast-growing community. We're but we do see it coming. Uh, we're northwest of Fort Worth, maybe 35, 40 minutes, and we see the growth coming up through the 287 corridor as well as the 114 corridor. So it's it's going to impact us. It just hasn't at this time. We're a 2,000 student school district right now. We were fortunate in that we didn't lose a lot in uh, through the pandemic. Uh, we're pretty static right now. We have hired some uh, demographics companies that are analyzing our growth potential and uh, growth uh, what's coming, and they do speculate. You know, we're going to be on the rise, uh, so we're trying to prepare for it. Uh, through our infrastructure, through replacing buildings, preparing for that incoming growth that is going to happen. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's happening throughout Texas. Wow, this is such a different conversation than New Jersey <laughs> or Chicago. <coughs> I am just going to tell you, I'm like thrilled. I'm beside myself. I might just walk away. I'm so happy right now. Well, so you came quite a ways today. Are you up there by those lakes just north of Dallas, over by Fort Worth? I'm more west. Okay. We are sit right on Lake Bridgeport, but not near those lakes. Those are more north and east. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to see you then. We're coming back in Dallas this fall. That's right. Yeah. So we're going to count on you to be there. This is really exciting. Okay. So let's talk about the real issues going on because you're in a bit of a different situation than a lot of the rest of the country. Okay. But you still have to sort of keep your eye on the future. So what we talked a lot about today was we're in the middle of big change. Yours is growth. Not as fast of a rate, but you've been there, and you're still going to get more. You know, mm -hmm. people are going to have more babies here. Yep. <laughs> um, change management in the age of technology, moving into the experience age. Everything's got to be Disneyland-like, or I'm not going. I'm not getting out of my pajamas today. Thank you very much. Like, how do you be that? How do you lead? Because I'm talking structural change, right? Things are not the same as the manufacturing model of, of 200 years ago. Right. You have to be something different. It's not a manufacturing line mm -hmm. anymore. It's customization for every child. And if you're not going to be that, you're going to get competition. Okay? Right. So let's talk about that from uh, leading the people, leading the structure. 
playing with change, mm -hmm. even as a leader yourself, you're on deck. Absolutely. Um, you know, being the instructional leader of a district, I found out a long time ago it, it can't always be my way. Uh, because my learning style is not what Cleveland ISD needs to learn by. So it's extremely important to hone in on the learning styles of every student because some are auditory, you know, you have the ones who have to touch and do, and then the visual. So in all of our new campuses we have opened in the last few years, we've incorporated the interactive whiteboard, the technology with cool. them. Cool. Because like you, you mentioned Disney World, Disneyland, students need stimulation, constant. Uh, the old Pong game that we had when I was little, that, that was just not... <laughs> not cutting it, Stephen. And the nope. things they play now, I don't even know how to turn it on and get it started. <laughs> so we have to meet the needs of the learner. Yeah. So the interactive whiteboards are extremely uh, important. In fact, next month I'm, I'm taking to the board a, a three-quarter million purchase for two of our existing elementary schools who are like, we don't have what the new ones have. Well, you're going to, because all students need to learn, you know, the same, uh, have that same ability. It's equity, that's that, what they yes. say now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and along with that, making sure our campuses um, have the capability for students to engage and be stimulated. Because like you said, if we don't provide it to them, they will find a, a learning avenue or vehicle where they can. And we want them to stay in Cleveland ISD. I mean, we, we love each and every one of them, even though we have 150 moving in a month and teachers are like, where are we gonna put them? But we, we find where to put them and get them where they need to be. So I we, love your problems. <laughs> These are really great problems. <laughs> we yeah. do needs assessments uh, with our teachers to ask them how students are learning, you know, in, in today's time. What are you observing and seeing in the classroom? And then with the teachers and campus administrators, um, they, they take that on up. And I, I do want to say uh, in, in Cleveland ISD, I have an executive director over technology and then a director over digital learning because those two are two totally separate um, But they animals. need to talk together, I'm they just saying. They do. They work yeah. together. So the technology executive director, he takes care of all the wires and the Wi-Fi and the modems and all that you know, type, kind of blah, stuff. Blah, blah. And then Ms. Barber does the interactive whiteboards, the digital learning, the curriculum for that. And, and those two do work together. Good. Uh, because teachers will say, I, I wanna buy this or that. And she'll first look at, well, how do we fit it into our infrastructure and our curriculum? And then she gets with Mr. Bowie, the executive director of technology, uh, to see if the infrastructure will support that. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you're going to need like 50 more. Are you here trolling all the other ones from all these other districts? Because they're all, they're all going to want to move out of those places. That's a, that's a district southern, uh, yeah. south of him. <laughs> uh, shh, secret. Okay, well, this is awesome. Okay, so good. So your response said change. How are you handling it over there? Uh, so a lot of what he's going through, we've already been through. Mm -hmm. So you're feeling very like the older brother right now? I, like, I am in that sense yeah. uh, because we've actually slowed down on the amount of growth that we have. Um, but we've, we've been around a long time and uh, we've gone through the, the smart board, star board age and the projectors. Uh -huh. And in fact, this summer um, we've got uh, an RFP out right now to put interactive panels across the entire district. And we're talking like almost 4,000 interactive panels. Mm -hmm. And tell me you're going to train all the teachers or they're going to revolt on you. Right? Sure, they get five minutes. <laughs> come on, Chad. Right? Chad, don't make me come down there. No, we actually, okay. we, we, we planned it in um, as part of the RFP process to include 120 days over the next three years of professional development mm -hmm. training for all those teachers. Amen, that's so, great. Um, so, but we're, we're constantly looking at things. We're, um, over the last... 10, 15 years, it's always been kind of status quo of we're doing this, we're building this school, we're building that school, we're buying new technology for them and everything, and they get all the latest and greatest, and all the other schools are sitting in the back saying, hey, what about me? And so not cool. the nice thing is is we just passed a bond in Klein ISD, and we're able to refresh technology across the board. And we're doing everything. We're From the teacher devices um, coming up, to student devices, to all of our CTE classrooms, interactive panels for everything. I mean, it, we looked at, um, we just uh, got a new 
executive director, Leslie Garakani, and he did a study of, of everything we do and how much time we're spending fixing all the old stuff. And it, it, it just, it really became an eye opener of just, mm -hmm. we have to have all these people to fix all this old stuff. Why don't we yeah. just buy the new stuff? Why don't we just buy new stuff? <laughs> Leslie, and, and are we you can here? Leslie, <laughs> yes, you're yes, here, Le Leslie is Thank here. Thank you, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, it, but it's been a great um, transition for us. And, you know, the one thing in technology is, is always changing, right? Of course. And you, you have to be comfortable in that discomfort. Um, and I, I heard something the, the other day, the guy said, fold your arms like you normally would. Now, now do it the opposite way. And it feels weird. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he says, that's what you have to get comfortable with. You have to get comfortable with the discomfort yes. in order to continue to move forward and, and press the envelope. I like that. So, mm, yeah. I like that a lot. All right, Roger, Eagle. Thank you. <laughs> As a smaller school district, we're able to uh, I don't want to say keep up with the changes, but we're able to try to get ahead of them. Um, we're, we have leveraged a lot of that uh, federal monies that yeah. came down yeah. to the school districts yeah. available for specifically for yeah. technology and for student use technology, where a lot of it E-rate falls short of. Yeah. So uh, by doing that, we were able to... Um, introduce interactive panels, interactive TVs throughout the district. Um, now it's the getting the teacher and the student it, to really engage, take advantage of, and utilize the tools that they have in front of them. And, and that's probably the struggle that, that we're seeing now. Well, yeah. It tells me a lot about the curve of maturity that you're in. You did this talk today. And, it, and so you're managing change, but now today you know where it's going. And it'll help you manage more to that change. There is a natural maturity going on in the United States, right? Like, we're moving to a new model of learning. The manufacturing line is not going to survive much longer. So you guys that are in growth, especially you're about to boom, in the middle of booming, just boom, still growing, you might want to buck me on this idea, but if you know your brethren in the inner cities, you won't. Because they have already experienced mass attrition. And it's not just because people left the cities. We're living in a time when a new model is emerging. And especially since the pandemic, right? Where people are like, we figured you out while we were at home in our pajamas and 50% um, of us learned better <laughs> and the other 50% curled up in a ball and had fits and didn't learn anything for two solid years. How are we going to do something, right? So you just learned we can't manufacture kids to be safe. Put them down that assembly line. How old are you? Good, you're in that grade. I'm sorry you're not at that level with your learning. You're screwed. You're just going to F. You're going to get F. We're just going to normalize you until you graduate. Okay, that's over. It's over because of Amazon, because of FedEx, because of Uber, all the other reasons. All the outside world is putting pressure on you to be a different model. And I'm not saying all online. I am saying the all human, eyeball you all day long teacher pass the baton to the next one down the next room. That can't continue. And it also can't continue because we can't get the teachers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thoughts on model running the ball down the middle. There is technology to do this, and you guys in growth could really lead the way and actually hold hands with some of these other guys that are failing, right? What are your thoughts on this? This is a model. We're in the middle of a change. What do you think? Just like, you know, students' learning styles, teachers, it's the same with them. And I, I know they struggle daily on how am I going to get this across to 20 or 25 different little minds and attitudes and, and what they deal with. And some learn faster and some don't learn as fast. Uh, so the, the support for teachers on all of this new technology is vital. Yes. Because if we just throw it at them and give them an interactive whiteboard, something they never used in, in their uh, public school years, uh, 
um, it will not get used. It will sit there. Or they'll yeah. turn it into a, a magnet or a, a, let's tape stuff up there. Uh, <laughs> so you, you have to support them in that use because it's it's what the students need. I know. And we don't have any of that going on, but I, I'm just correct. saying. Oh, okay. no. It's not um, a correct. It's okay. None of that. I can see myself in a classroom today with all of this technology. But um, supporting them, and someone had mentioned earlier that there is no um, – a lesson plan or a, a baseline for all students to learn by and I've I've said it with my cabinet before that it's almost like every student needs their own IEP and it, it's, it's becoming know, that way it's what people it expect yes and to make sure they're learning to their capacity and, and getting what they need uh, and to be successful in the classroom uh, it, it's very exciting and listening to our teachers to see there might be some technology out there that we don't know about yet or, or that they are seeing. And I'll give you an example. I was uh, talking the other day to digital learning and she said, we have some teachers that are looking at, and I call it those panels you see on CSI where they're standing at this glass wall and they're using their finger and moving oh, stuff. Yeah. So Love we're it. looking at bringing some of that in and working with some of our students doing pilots on it to see uh, how we can do that. Two years ago, we purchase some um, the 3D goggle um, glasses and it's like where will we incorporate these into I'm probably not calling it the right thing it's those things my grandson wears that you wear them and it looks like you're right there at the, the amusement park virtual reality, virtual reality yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look at me, 3D goggle like I'm at the movies. Remember that? Oh. <laughs> you got one red, one blue. You're good. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, things are moving ahead. Yep. But I, we, I just have, Andrew, toss me one of your things. Sure. We uh, are. Right over here. Yeah. You mean stuff like this? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is 3D. You can hold in your hand and it will project. Yeah, the actual touch. Um, but we're using those goggles in our anatomy and physiology courses when they are uh, looking at the human body and all of the bones and everything. They can now actually be more interactive with it than just looking at a plastic model they lay on. They can go around and look at it from all angles. That's what this so, does. Holy yes, cow. It does, but this is not as exciting as those virtual. <laughs> <laughs> it is when it's all on the screen, but anyway, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll continue with that and, and listen to our teachers on what it is they're wanting and then see how it fits into the infrastructure, like I had mentioned. Yeah. And get it in here because I'm, I'm a big supporter of technology. Now, I'll tell them myself, as a principal, my APs would come to me and say, we want some of those tablets we can walk around and do the classroom observations Love with. It. Love I said, it. I'll buy you all you want, but I'm using my paper and pencil. You know, I'll write it down and I'll go back and type it in. That's just how I am. But I never held back anyone else from having what they needed to be successful. So we invest in a lot of technology in the district, and we'll continue to do so as long as I'm there. Okay, uh, can you do email? Course. Can you do that? I can do an email. Okay, yes, good. I sure can. You're, you're okay then. <laughs> you're okay. Well, I want to come back to you on that because I like the attitude. It's wonderful. But I think things are going to go really fast for you mm -hmm. in the terms of, like, a new sort of leadership too. Chad, what is your comment on this model shift? Uh, I think the... Uh, the pandemic opened up people's eyes to the fact that you don't need a high school degree. You don't need a college degree. You anymore. also don't need an institution at all. And so like <laughs> exactly. the homeschooling going on is majestic. Yep. And I, I think because the pandemic opened that up, yeah. you kind of pulled back the curtain. Yep. And all of a sudden people are realizing, hey, I can make money doing mm. something I love to do. And I don't need a degree in it, you know. And I think that tutoring, the, whether it's tutoring, whether it's botany, whether it's, uh, you know, because people had a lot of time to spend at home and then all of a sudden they're, they're like, hey, I'm pretty good at this construction stuff. I might might as well just go be a construction worker. I can make a good living at it. Um, I can go be a land surveyor and make six figures straight out of high school. Yeah, no why college. Do, yeah. why, why do I need to go to college? Why do I need to go do all this extra stuff when I can make money? And with the technology and stuff nowadays, they can get on. They can learn how to create a business off of that. Mm -hmm. Real estate, you know, they go invest in, in real estate and that kind of stuff. I mean, 
there are so many avenues out there the traditional schools of pumping out factory workers we don't have any factories left in america well most of them are burning down now anyway so yeah but right. um or they're being renovated and turned into ho yeah. homes yeah. you know by by big rich people that want this you know yeah. 12 million it's square foot home this, yeah. you know but, yeah. but that's the thing they're they're all moving in that direction where um everything's built overseas and we just buy it and get it shipped to us overnight by amazon or fedex or whoever yeah I, so I, I, I agree with that. you but i also think that a new form of manufacturing might be coming back which is sort of like micro they call it micro manufacturing but also you touched on something really critical which is we're actually formulating right now in america watch out a gig economy of teachers mm -hmm. you know how uber transformed the taxi industry the tutoring companies are straight up in miracle and growth i mean it's oh, like yeah. whoa, right they're just making money hand over fist globally and now in the united states it's two percent of japan's gdp right here in the united states americans like tuned out of like their local education system they're like i was gonna get a tutor thanks yep. Thank, talk to the hand mm -hmm. right i'm out um and they're mathnasium, fastest growing retail chain store in the nation. Why? Because you're not doing it right, they're going to go over there. Hmm. They're going to buy it, right? They're shopping. So, well, and they're, the they're future, driving though, you... the, They're driving the kids to where the kid wants to learn. Yes. You know, I, I look at my son, for example. He wanted to be an engineer. He's wanted to be an engineer since he was in third grade. He's now at Texas Tech studying mechanical engineering. When he was in high school, he was pulling his hair out. The pandemic, greatest thing that ever happened for him. Was he bored in high school? He was bored in high school because oh. he didn't do all the athletics and he didn't do any of the other stuff. He wanted to focus solely on his engineering degree and engineering pathway. Yeah. And so he learned uh, when the pandemic hit, he learned that the system crashes at 830 when everybody gets on it. So he gets up at 430, does all of his work for the entire week inside of two or three hours, and he's done. And he's got the rest of the week to do whatever he wants to do. Wow, we need to I mean, talk to Cisco. Why is the system crashing? What is happening? Well, it was Girls. like it's your it's your learning management systems. Yeah. All those things were crashing yeah. because they just couldn't handle the load of mm -hmm. that many kids getting on at eight thirty when they all woke up. And my son was just like, "I'll get on at four thirty because I'm already up, knock out all my schoolwork for the entire yeah. week." You have I'm an done. awesome son, first of all. Like no yeah. nobody else's kid in the history of the world <laughs> got up at four thirty. He, he um, went from being the 20th and uh, in the, in the 20th percentile to being in the 15th percentile because of the pandemic. I like this I'm kid. Like, I want to meet him next this time I'm here. amazing. This is awesome. I like this idea of modeling. I like where your mind went to. Like, they're now, like, like almost everything got thrown out with the bathwater during the pandemic. They're like, college, smallage. <laughs> I want to do what I want to do, right? Like, this is a huge, can you imagine how big of a mind shift this is in, in just a couple of years? Mm -hmm. right, this is massive. And I agree with you. There's many other things that could be done. Micro, you know, manufacturing. Yep. They're I'm like, that's where Etsy makes their money. There are people at home making jewelry. Yep. Right? All over the place. All right. Roger, what are your thoughts on this whole model shift? Because you're, you're like in a growth model. You're just imagining building more and more schools. Right. Okay. To Jazz's point, Jazz's point, I, I, pandemic was an eye-opener for teachers, parents, students, everybody. I mean, it... It, it it changed the way we visualize now, you know, going to school, learning, uh, uh, any of that aspect. Hell, going to work, um, it, you know, I think even salesmen determined, I don't have to fly out to that customer anymore. I'm just going to Zoom him and make mm -hmm. the sale yep. from my mm -hmm. living yeah. room. Yeah, why am I going there? So it, 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 now I think where, where as educators we come in is that, we have to change change our mindset of how to deliver information to students but, but there has to be buy-in but that buy-in has to not only be within the district you need to get that buy-in out in the community as well so that your parents understand because a, a lot of parents just a little bit younger than me are, are you know they came from the classroom environment yes. so they feel like their students ought to still be in that classroom environment your child's not learning that way anymore Let's teach that parent as well, get the buy-in from them so that we can deliver that information and they'll help us deliver that, help that child 
to receive that information yeah. in a digital format. Yeah, I agree with you because, I, well, just looking at the data that I, I've looked at and analyzed, the millennial generation, that's the last generation that has been entirely in the old manufacturing model. Mm -hmm. But they were already, by the time the millennials started to become parents, there was about 30% of them that had been in some sort of the fractured model. Privates, charters, homeschooling, mm. okay? Because, so, so that's the last generation, the millennial parents. When the alphas graduate, which they're starting to now, you're going to see a wholesale change because they love family mm -hmm. by survey. And they don't want to go anywhere. Why are you making me go somewhere? I, I get less family time, okay? So this is interesting. So I'm just really challenging you guys. I'm going to, I think, you know, I've, uh, uh, we've got some really good information from you. I want to actually ask the audience if they want to ask any questions. And then if they don't, I'm going to throw one more zinger <laughs> at you. Um, but how we do, how we doing out here? What do you guys, what do you want to ask them? What do you want to stump them with? Come on, people. Go ahead. When you confront, you know, workflow change management, what would you say is the single biggest challenge that you face when, that you're trying to you know, get through? Go ahead. Um, I guess it depends on the change, right? That short answer to your answer is it depends. Um, you look at, we're going to roll out 4,000 interactive panels, 30,000 Chromebooks, 5,000 teacher devices, 12,000 iPads, all in the next four months. Mm -hmm. It's a logistical nightmare. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough people on my staff to handle it. So I have to build in things into the contracts to say, I need services to come out and help me get this set up. I need services to help me do this. I need services to help me do that. And then project manage the, the end all of it in order to make sure that it all happens in a timely manner and, and we account for the, the worst case scenario. You know, um, So logistic is is a big thing that's going to be happening for us over the next four or five months. But um, yeah, anybody else want to answer that, Roger? For me, it's whenever you're discussing change and whether it be workflow or deployment, whatever. It's it. Oh, it just makes me so angry. Is we've always done it this way. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, that, that's the worst mindset a person in today's digital age can have. Mm -hmm. We've always done yeah. it this way. Why are we making changes? I think the other thing that you have to look at when you're instituting change is make it as easy and as simple as possible. If you want people to adopt it, it's got to be easy. The easier it is, the quicker they are going to adopt it, the quicker they're going to move forward with it, the quicker it's going to become a success. If there is any hindrance or bump in the road to that change, mm -hmm. people are going to oh, oh, all of a sudden start pushing back, oh, no, nope, it's not working, it's not going to happen, and then before we know it, they've got their, their feet so far dug into the sand that they're not moving forward anymore. So you've got to make it easy for people to be able to, to accept it and move on and create it as a habit for them to move. Yeah, move and forward. maybe you want to comment on this as a superintendent mm -hmm. because Yes, they, people do what they, they do. And at that point, then, as a, as a leader, leader, you got to step in and go, I'm sorry, you're doing it. Yeah, so finding the quality and knowledge in the staff who can come in and do what he was talking about, uh, you know, rolling out all of this technology and supporting it and understanding the education system versus the business world where we do hire some from, uh, within the last year, I had to really sit down and and look at the uh, salary structure because we were losing some great technicians and uh, people in technology and digital learning who were going out to the business world. Mm -hmm. And I said, that has to stop because they are great for us. They're great. They work well with teachers and with campuses, and we don't want to lose them. Uh, so we did a major overhaul in that area, and we were able to retain and now attract more uh, from other places. Because you, you have to be able to look down and have directors who are visionaries who don't mind coming to me and saying, mm -hmm. we need to stop the bleeding. Yeah. And because this is what's coming, do you know what's coming here when 50,000 students are here? You know, and they have to just 
come tell me. The vision too. So I, I need you, sir, to do something now. And I'm, I'm very responsive, and we took care of that. But you, with the constant change, it's not just about buying the technology. You have to have the people who uh, implement it and support it mm -hmm. and who are there to, to keep your infrastructure going and get the Wi-Fi back up. You know, it's, <laughs> it's all of this stuff, and we need quality people to do that. Uh, so it's, it's been a, a constant with us. Yeah, and I, and I love the fact that you're in that realm. And I've been there in corporate America, right? Like before I founded Learning Council, I was in a company that was heavy growth. And some, every once in a while, people would quit because what was happening in heavy growth is they would get overwhelmed with too much stuff to do. Okay? Yeah. And they're like, too much, I mean, we're going to hire more people. Well, it's not in the budget this year, we're going to do it next year. And they're like, you're making money hand over fist, or are you kidding me? Can't you do dynamic budgeting in the middle of the year? What is your problem? Okay, so that's what was happening. And, and that's sort of what happens with you guys, right? Yeah. Um, yes. But here's the thing. This is a sad thing. I think 80-some percent plus of the districts in America are in the opposite boat. And I want to ask you to do one final thing and think about an opposite level of advice or characterize how would you manage devolution? It's different than you, you're in a growth, right? But you're but now you're in a situation where things are falling apart. Just pretend. Losing massive numbers of kids. What do you do? What would you do? Scale back. Yeah. Scale back or find different ways of Scale doing it. Scale back or that's the one I want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finding different ways to, yes. to, to, to deliver to what they want. Um, the reason I say scale back is because the brick and mortar, you're paying for all that. Right. So do you need that brick and mortar anymore? Overhead. Mm -hmm. And you need that overhead. Do so you? you scale back and you say, okay, we don't need that school or that space, so let's figure out what we can do with that space. Can we rent that space out? And, can we and take retail space that's things. empty now in the city? Right. Exactly. Can, can we shift how we do things? Um, but keep in mind, on the, on the back end infrastructure side of it, you've still got to get switches, routers, wires, all that kind of stuff in order to be able to provide the technology access to those spaces. When they're in building, but if you switch to a model for real, it's true hybrid. Right. Yeah. And they're like Atlanta schools where they're, every Friday is completely off. Right. Whether like a lot of these charters where they're they're only in building for lab or right. a needed teacher meeting. Yep. So they still have human interface, but it's a different master schedule. It's like it's true hybrid logistics. I'm having you go there, and this is so great that you did go there, because I think right now, and just go like this, Steven, la 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 <laughs> right now. I think right now, if you only build to the historical past, this is for you and him. Mm -hmm. You've already done this. You miss the lesson of the failure right now. Like, there's a superintendent that we just saw down in Hillsboro, seventh largest district in the nation, in Tampa, mm -hmm. and he's got a boundary fight now with the boards and the area around it because he's lost a lot of kids. And he's going to consolidate. This is what's happening. And I went right back to him at then. I said, please don't do that. Please don't do that. What people want culturally right now, and if you don't see this, then you're blind, is home, retail. You need to disperse into more small schools than consolidate to bigger ones and force people to go further. You're going you're gonna to decay yourself further. What are you doing? This is not the well, way to do it. It goes yeah. back to the old, um, a lot of the schools around and the subdivisions around um, Houston area and stuff, they had elementary schools right there inside mm -hmm. the subdivision. Yeah. People moved to those subdivisions because they wanted, they wanted to be in that, that. school yes. that is right there in their home subdivision. They're kicked and walked back and forth to school. That's what they're wanting. The problem for districts is, is they grow and grow and grow, and then you gotta, you're, you're taking three or four elementary schools, shoving them into an intermediate school, and then taking three or four intermediate schools and shoving them into a giant high school and people are like, I don't want all those people around. I want that smaller interaction, that smaller one-on-one, more one-on-one experience. Is this attention to the model and change? It's where you and you got to go. Think about this. 
You don't, you're not going the same place the others went. This is very important. Right. Our, uh, our high school sits at 3,400 students. So this past August, you know, once you have too many students in a building, learning, effective learning just cannot take place. You're, you're doing more of crowd control. Uh, so yeah. we had opened a, a new elementary school out on the north side of town, a north side elementary. Uh, so over the course of this past summer, I took their old existing campus and in three months turned it into a ninth grade center. So we pulled 1,010 ninth graders off of the high school and it was a, a positive response from parents. Yeah, you had some who were like, well, are they going to get the same thing? Well, first of all, yes, we have to provide that to them. Yeah. We made it happen. But you saw a, a, a quick shift in the existing high school, not because you pulled ninth graders off. Everybody thinks ninth graders are the problem. I, I just found out it's a very that's hormonal not year. true. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very um, hormonal year, so it's, you know. It's really not. I think it's the overall mix of thousands of students on yeah, the campus. Yeah, why are you doing that? Yeah. Uh, so now we, we have the 2,400 at the 10 through 12 and a uh, 1,000 over here, and it's, it's working very well. So what you're saying about, you know, the model of they want smaller, uh, we had a charter school open in August down south, and we have students who, since it's so far south, our buses have to start their routes at 4.50 in the morning to start picking up high school students because we have one high school. Like his so, son, getting up really yes, early. Yes, all what? of those who live down by the Grand Parkway have to be brought all the way north yes. into Cleveland mm -hmm. proper. So they're on the bus sometimes for an hour or more. Uh, so when that charter school opened, which is a, a K through eight, we did lose about a thousand students to it. And the parents knew they don't offer transportation. They don't offer all of these extracurricular, but it's because it's right by their house. Yep. And they limit their enrollment. They they put it at fourteen hundred. It's smaller, like what you're saying. So we we've seen that as well. So with our uh, architects and construction companies for future campuses, because we've been asked, why are you opening campuses and buying portables? You know, a few months later, <laughs> why don't you just build that elementary to hold three thousand kids? It yeah. goes back to that's not a conducive learning environment. So right. we have to educate the community on best practices when it comes it's, to um, yeah. the environment for education. And I would agree with you, and I would fight for that for you. Don't make me yeah. come down here and fight for that. I'll beat up all your parents. Hey, just um, wait till you have five high schools that are sitting at 3,400 kids. I cannot imagine. That's yeah, but the, the truth is, is like that's what we did for many, many years. Consolidate, 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 then have a decay moment, it all falls down. Like, this is not wise. The, 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 the community environment, like California just passed a lot of stand-up 630 community schools, why? They see the writing on the wall. They're going to compete with themselves. Mm -hmm. They're going to compete not only with the charters, but also the traditional school. And they're going to build the future around the decaying past. Yeah. So there's so much to learn about what's going on right now. Do you want to make a final comment? I, in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, you don't, it's, it's uncommon for you to see a neighborhood explode, build up, without an elementary school, at least an elementary Theaters. school, yeah. in that, within that, housing development which yeah. is to your point yeah mama close, wants to be close right yeah. there yeah mm -hmm. got to pick the kid up for the another shot blah 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 you know well, i don't want to go in an hour what are you talking about mm -hmm. you know i i was down there with hinoyosa did he he's gone from dallas now but he came to one of our mm -hmm. dallas isd and then like you know running this big monster of a district it's like now it's not much of a monster it's not as much of a monster as it used to be because the distribution is following the pattern of the internet that's right Everything is going out to be smaller and smaller nodes on the internet, right? This is just the pattern that we see in the future. So watch out for growth. Don't let people take all your money and spend it on huge, huge, massive buildings with, you know, don't do it, don't do it. No. Build community, mm -hmm. home, sofa chair with really washable furniture, right? <laughs> but, yes. <laughs> this has been super fun. If you like key. it, are we have time? Like, like, this was awesome.